you've probably heard of global warming and climate change. In this video, we're going to take a look at what the difference between the two of them is, what causes them, and what their consequences could be. If we take a look at the Earth, spread all the way around the surface is a protective layer of gases, which we call the atmosphere. The atmosphere is essential for life for loads of reasons, but one of these is that it acts like an insulating blanket, or a greenhouse, keeping in the perfect amount of the sun's heat energy, so that the Earth stays at a nice temperature all the time. For comparison, the Moon, which is just as far away from the sun as we are, but has no atmosphere, varies between positive 100 degrees on the sunny side, to minus 200 degrees on the dark side. To understand how the atmosphere regulates our temperature like this, let's zoom in to the surface of the Earth. As the sun's heat energy comes down towards the Earth in the form of light rays, it passes through the atmosphere and hits the surface of the Earth. Some of this energy is absorbed and heats up the ground, but most of it is either re-emitted or reflected back into the atmosphere towards space. Although some of this radiation does make it back to space, most of it actually hits particles of gas in our atmosphere, which will absorb all of the energy. And after a short delay, the particles then re-emit the energy in random directions. This means that some of the energy will be re-emitted towards space, and some towards the Earth. Either way though, just like before, most of the energy will collide with another gas particle before it can leave the atmosphere. This process of being absorbed and re-emitted by gas particles happens over and over again, which means that the heat energy stays close to Earth far longer than if there was no atmosphere. And it's this process that keeps the Earth at a warm and stable temperature. This process happens with lots of different molecules, including carbon dioxide and methane, but also water vapor. We call this group of gases greenhouse gases, and although the greenhouse effect that they cause is essential for life, it's also responsible for global warming. In the four and a half billion years that the Earth has been around, the strength of this greenhouse effect has grown and shrunk over and over. And this is happening again right now, mostly due to humans releasing loads of carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere. The problem is that as these gases accumulate, and the greenhouse effect gets stronger, the Earth warms up, which we call global warming. In the past 100 years, our planet has already got almost a whole degree warmer, and it's on track to rise a lot more if we don't do something major to stop it. Now, the term climate change is a bit different. It's more about the effects of this global warming on the climate. And remember, climate just describes long-term weather patterns. For example, one of the consequences of global warming is that rare weather events like droughts, hurricanes, and floods will become both more common and more severe. So we refer to these changes under the term climate change. Another consequence of global warming is sea level rise which actually happens for two different reasons. One is that the higher temperatures will cause more ice to melt, which will then flow into the ocean. The second is that as the water in the oceans warms up, it expands, and so its volume will increase, making the sea levels rise even more. And this rise in sea levels will lead to seasonal flooding across the world, and in some places, the submersion of entire islands and coastal towns. Climate change will also have a more general impact on the wild organisms across the world. As temperatures and rainfall patterns change, species that were perfectly adapted to their environment might not be able to survive anymore. In some cases, species might be able to adapt to the new conditions, or maybe migrate to other regions where the conditions are a bit better. And we are seeing these things happen in some places already. For example, lots of species are slowly moving towards the poles, where it's cooler. Unfortunately though, lots of species can't adapt or migrate fast enough. 
and biodiversity is likely to fall dramatically in the next few decades. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.